This poster presentation titled A Retrospective Analysis of Scavenging in Southern Nevada Forensic Anthropology Cases from 2000 to 2021 was conducted by myself, Catherine C. Woolen, and Jennifer F. Burns from the Department of Anthropology at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. The Mojave Desert is the smallest and driest desert in the United States, spanning across regions of California, Southern Nevada, and small regions of Utah and Arizona. Due to the extreme fluctuations in temperature and weather patterns in this environment, it fosters unique taphonomic processes to any exposed human remains. One of these being vertebrate or animal scavenging. There's a vast array of vertebrate scavenger species throughout Southern Nevada, most of which leave distinctive skeletal markers to human remains. Scavenger taxa include, but is not limited to, carnivores such as coyotes, kit foxes, gray foxes, domestic dogs and cats, bobcats and mountain lions, rodents including deer mice, mice, rats, squirrels, and chipmunks, and then various avian species, which include owls, falcons, hawks, turkey vultures, golden eagles, and bald eagles. So prior to the commencement of this study, an analysis of vertebrate scavenging patterns in Southern Nevada had not been conducted. To fill this gap in the current forensic anthropological literature, our forensic analysis covered the taphonomic patterns of vertebrate scavenging in Southern Nevada. To conduct the present research, cases that required a forensic anthropology consult with the Clark County Office of the Coroner and Medical Examiner's Office, or CCO CME for short, between the years 2000 to 2021 were reviewed for any documented evidence of vertebrate scavenging. In total, there were 111 forensic anthropology cases during this period, and once these cases were documented, the presence and or absence of scavenging marks by skeletal element, as well as any missing or complete absence of skeletal elements were recorded in a comprehensive spreadsheet by individual cases. And once this was completed, evidence of scavenging was recorded based on skeletal element, side being left or right, possible scavenger taxa and types of scavenging mark when it was documented. And these markers include pits, punctures, scores, and furrows, which I'll go over briefly now. So on this slide in figure two, there's an example of scoring indicated by the two blue arrows and these are linear parallel scratches produced when the teeth slip and drag over the outermost surface of the bone. And then here in figure three is an example of punctures where the blue arrow is pointing. Punctures are the most easily distinguished feature of carnivore scavenging and are produced when the points of the teeth penetrate into the bone, resulting in these types of perforations. And then on this slide, figure four depicts furrows, which are channels in the bone produced by the cheek teeth of carnivores. And this is evident in this image along the proximal or that topmost portion of the tibia indicated by the blue arrow. And then finally, an example of pits can be seen here in figure five. And these are non-perforating indentations caused by the tips of carnivores teeth. And you can see this as indicated by the blue arrow. The results of this analysis found that of the 111 forensic anthropology cases, 43 or 38.7% had documented evidence of vertebrate scavenging. This evidence includes numerous skeletal markers attributed to canid and dentition, and it's hypothesized that this is likely from coyotes. There's scoring and punctures likely from vultures, and furrows created by rodents. The location of vertebrate scavenging based on animal taxa is shown here in figure six, with areas of canid scavenging shown in red, rodent scavenging in yellow, and avian scavenging in blue. And then the elements colored in gray did have evidence of scavenging, but the taxa were unspecified in the case reports. It's evident that canid scavenging predominantly occurred at the ends of the long bones, and canid scavenging accounted for the majority of cases in this analysis. Rodent scavenging was only recorded on the femoral diaphysis, which is fairly typical as this rounded area of bone is much easier for rodents' teeth to latch onto and gnaw upon, and visible evidence of avian scavenging was documented along the median eye orbits. 
The femora, fibulae, tibiae, radii, ribs, and skull all displayed the highest amounts of scavenging markers. And comparative data gathered from the Forensic Anthropology Center at Texas State, or FACS, found that it's actually the skull and mandible that are among the first bones disarticulated by vultures. And here in figure seven, you can see evidence of avian scavenging, likely from a vulture to the right inner eye orbit. Vultures tend to leave scores to the inner eye orbits, as well as these triangular shaped punctures, like the one that the blue arrow is pointing to. Out of all the skeletal elements, the hands, feet, sternum, and vertebrae, when present, tended to display the fewest number of scavenging marks. However, these elements were also some of the most commonly absent or were missing entirely when the remains were recovered. And of all the skeletal elements, the hands and feet were missing in the greatest frequency. This can be seen in figure eight, where the frequencies of missing skeletal elements are indicated. And of the 43 cases with evidence of scavenging, those with more than 45% missing of a skeletal element are indicated in red. Cases with 34 to 44.9% missing are in blue. Those with 22 to 33.9% missing are in purple. And then any with less than 22.9% missing are colored in gray. Comparative research conducted in the Sonoran Desert by Beck and colleagues from 2015 similarly found the bones of the hands and feet to be the least likely to preserve. This study also found that the proximal ends of bones preserved in greater numbers than the distal ends, and there were also superior and inferior preservation differences where the cervical vertebrae did not preserve as well as the thoracic or lumbar. And it's likely that this type of scavenging reported was attributed to canids and vultures. It is unknown if those body regions that were missing from this analysis had been consumed and or carried off through scavenging activity, so they could not be recovered or they were deteriorated through weathering and or other taphonomic processes. And then in some of the older CCOCME case reports, there are discrepancies in the types of information recorded. Exact location or description of the scavenged skeletal element had not been documented or there were very few details provided. Further, a majority of consult cases with the coroner's office only request a trauma analysis or biological profile where age, assigned sex at birth, ancestry, and stature are estimated and reported back. So scavenging activity is typically not recorded in forensic anthropology case reports. In conclusion, comparative data does offer very valuable insights into the vertebrate scavenging patterns in similar desert environments, but it is apparent that scavenging patterns continue to be highly variable. In Southern Nevada, human remains are scavenged predominantly by canids with few visible signs of vulture and rodent scavenging. This study is ongoing with additional cases being added to a comprehensive sca scavenging record in order to understand more about the scavenging patterns in this specific region of the United States. In the near future, I will be compiling location-based data from the CCOCME Forensic Anthropology Case Reports. And once this location data has been gathered, a Geographic Information System, or GIS, analysis will be conducted to infer exactly where human skeletal remains are found and most commonly scavenged. This will provide critical information for the CCO, CME, and the Forensic Anthropology and Bioarchaeology Laboratory, or Fab Lab, at UNLV, so that we may more easily find and identify scavenged human remains. The authors would like to acknowledge Brianne Kennard and Suzanne Miel from the CCO, CME, Dr. Timothy Gaucher at Texas State University, Dr. John Cervello at the University of North Texas, Dr. Marin Palud from the University of Nevada at Reno, and Angie Christensen from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This research would not have been possible without their contributions. So we want to thank you so much for taking time to attend this presentation. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments about this research. Thank you.